I've got set up for you today is um, with the Rigel DS1102E. Um, we're going to do pass fail. It's not a function that I normally use very often, but I didn't see a lot of videos on it, so I thought I would uh, do a video on how to set up and use the uh, pass fail function. Right now, I've got a pulse on the display, which is coming from um, my Rigel DG4162 arbitrary waveform generator and <clears throat> I use the auto button on the uh, oscilloscope just to let it you know do the setup itself with the source part and normally when you do that you get there are um, you know the time base is a little bit slower than I like anyway um, but it's important for what I'm going to show you so uh, the way you st uh, start the um, pass fail or set it up actually would be to press utility and then there's a pass fail function here so you set that. <clears throat> now in that menu for pass fail, you've got enable test, so that actually turns the pass fail function on or off. Um, which channel you're going to source from as far as what signal you're going to do the pass fail operation on. And then an operate button to actually start the pass fail and then display on and off. So <clears throat> let's turn the function on. Now I have display message display turned on, so it should show up as soon as I turn it on. <clears throat> now this was set up earlier with this waveform. And unless you turn the scope off, it pretty much comes back on with the one you had previously set up, which is a good feature, I suppose, if you're going to do multiple tests. Um, so then up here, you have fail, how many, pass, how many, total, how many. Um, and again, message display, all that does is just turn that display off. <coughs> okay, so then if you do the second menu page here, you have output pass, pass plus sound, fail, or fail plus sound. It's kind of a like that chirp that you get when you're pressing the buttons is what the sound is so if you're not anywhere near you're not going to really hear that and then uh, this button down here does stop on output so you're using these two together okay so stop on whatever the output is so if it's the output set to pass and it's stop on pass if the output stop on output is set to excuse me if the output set to fail then it's going to be stop on uh, output equaling fail. Okay, those two kind of work in conjunction with each other. Um, and I don't want to do stop on any of those, so we'll leave that on, or uh, leave that function off. And then the mask setting is another screen, which is a little tricky to get to. There it is. Okay, so now we're on the menu um, where you actually set up the mask. Now, uh, when you press create mask, it will pretty much generate this mask around the waveform and what the mask is basically <clears throat> is you're uh, setting the parameters up for that waveform of course um, from left to, uh, to right you're doing your time domain and then vertically you're doing your uh, amplitude and the way you adjust these is <clears throat> like up here we have X mask you press that so it's highlighted you adjust the uh, cursor control kind of a thing up here and uh, you hit the limit, right? The thing about that is, when you adjust this, it doesn't uh, change it on the fly, okay? It's not dynamic in that way, or real-time in that way. So you have to adjust the mask where you want it. Hit Create Mask, and it'll adjust it after you change that setting. And this is true for both uh, X and Y. Okay. Now, <clears throat> one thing about this waveform that's important to see is with this mask, there's really no mask up inside the pulse width here, and that's just because the pulse is so narrow. Okay, so your choices are <clears throat> you can adjust the mask to compensate for that, but then the uh, distance between the mask and the actual waveform, as far as what sets up pass fail criteria, is really narrow, and it's, it's tough to work that way, and you might get a lot more false positives uh, in a sense with it set up that way. So see, you've got it up in there right now when you do that, but look how much gap there is between that mask and the edges of the pulse waveform. So I think a better way to do that is to adjust the time base so that you have a wider pulse width displayed. And then work with it that way. And then you can adjust this back to where there's a little more gap in there. And again, a lot of that is a matter of you know <clears throat> what your criteria is for pass fail okay you know how much variance in time 
uh, and that waveform do you want before it fails? How much variance do you want in amplitude before that fails? And that's totally up to the user when they're setting this up. Okay, so we have a waveform on there. We have some criteria. And <clears throat> I'm going to go back to the Rigel here now. And, okay. But first, let's um, do... Um, operate is on. No, there we go. So now, when I press the operate button, you're seeing up here in the display, there's no fails because it's sitting there inside the mask, so it fits the criteria. And then pass, and the number of uh, passes and fail total, this is the total for both uh, pass and fail together. Um, what I'm going to do now is change the pulse width. And um, so we'll watch that fail. Okay, so now if you look at it, <clears throat> I've changed the pulse width and some of the pulses inside that mask, so it's hit the point where it's now saying it's a failure. Um, so now you're seeing these fails up here. Um, no more passes because it's not going to, obviously, and then those two equal your totals still. So, if we go back to where it was, um, the fails stop, but it continues to test because that's the way I have it set up. It's not set up to stop on pass or fail, um, so then these keep running. Okay, now um, the output is not stop, set to stop on output, but the output is uh, f set to fail. So um, I believe there's a port in the back of the oscilloscope that'll output a signal every time it fails. So even though you're not hearing it, there's no audible sound or anything like that, it could be fed to some other device, which um, could certainly um, present you with a, a nice loud audible sound. Or, um, I would assume you could feed that to some circuit that counts the number of fails and so on. <clears throat> so you could probably do that as well. So again, it's not too difficult to set up working through the, the menus, as you saw, is a little tough, um, not intuitive, like most of the menus are on the scope for whatever reason, but um, still easy enough. And time base is important if you're concerned about the uh, pulse width um, in this area here versus the outside. I mean, obviously, if you change the pulse width, width and make it more narrow, it's going to affect the outside as much as it's going to affect the inside. But um, in the case where there wasn't any mask on the inside, it could get pretty narrow and never fail. And though that would technically, in your uh, whatever circuit you're working with, could technically be a fail, it wouldn't show up as a fail on here which is why it's important to use the time base to make sure you cover all the area on the waveform that you can and that you need to cover for your past uh, fail criteria. So. I guess that's about it. I don't believe there's anything else to show you on that. I'll stop the, dis the uh, test. Now there was a load and a save. I didn't really mess with that or import export, and I would assume that's so you can save the waveform or the in, uh, along with the uh, number of pass and fails and total up in the display and everything. Um, <clears throat> didn't really mess with that, but it's probably the same as any other time you're saving displays uh, and waveforms uh, to either the scope or the USB that you might have plugged into the front here, your USB thumb drive. So that's it. A quick little demo on pass fail. If you have any questions, please feel free to post them in the comment section. And if you enjoyed the video, please like it and uh, share if you wish. And I always appreciate everyone always viewing the videos. Thanks a lot and 7-3 for now.